It's day 17 of Defemorember, your daily ephemera inspiration in December. Welcome to another episode of this December Daily series, which is a collaboration with my dear friend Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. No matter what the prompt list wants us to create today, when I look at my journal, then there's one thing that is totally clear. <laughs> it has to become something that is really, really flat. Today's prompt is rust and bookmark. And in our paper bag with the number 17 for day 17 of Defemoramba, we are going to find the animal that we can use today. I mean, <laughs> and one of our international snacks, of course. The animal for today is the moth and our international snack, Hershey's, Hershey's, I don't know how I have to say this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Cookies and cream, now more cookies. Okay, that looks really interesting. The color of this, is that chocolate? Uh, I don't know, but uh, that looks really interesting. I have never seen a snack in this color. And this comes from the USA, so we will save that for later. Okay, so let's try to do this. <laughs> we have to create a bookmark. And, uh, you know, um, yesterday I had my medium junk journal life crisis because, yeah, I, it needs no explanation because, can you see this? This is just crazy. My journal has become so fat in the last 16 days and now it's day 17 and I know there are some more days coming and <laughs> I don't know how to manage that to bring the rest of the ephemera into my journal. So, we have to create something that is really flat. <laughs> so, I thought there must be bookmarks in this world that are flat. So, first I thought we can perhaps create a bookmark out of postage stamps, because those are relatively flat. <laughs> But then I have thrown that idea away because that would perhaps be really difficult and, you know, <laughs> my nerves are really, really thin at the moment. <laughs> but speaking about thin, I think we can make another bookmark that is really thin. And I thought about something that is attached to the bookmark, but that later on is outside of the journal. Do you know what I mean? Those things that are outside of the journal can be a little bit thicker. So let's try to make a thin bookmark with something like a decoration that is later on outside of the journal. <laughs> so we can use the moth for um, today's project as our animal. And if you perhaps are new here and you're thinking, what the heck is she talking about? You can find all of these animal cards as a freebie to download and print at home and you can also find the prompt list in english and in german everything is linked down below this video you can find all of these things as a freebie so that you can print them out and join defamoramba with having these things at hand for your own creations and um yeah what you also can have and get as a freebie is this thing here <clears throat> I've created this thing as a freebie for you and this is the base for my project for today. So this is something that I will turn into a bookmark, <laughs> a flat bookmark. So I have made this here so that you can print that out at home. The link below, uh, the link below, the link for the freebie is down below in the description box. And um, to create this, there are, of course, different possibilities. I will talk about that in a second. But first of all, we have to cut this out, of course. I have already prepared that. So we have this thing here, this bigger piece. And then on the printable, there are also three of these moths here available. Um, these you can use for different things. I will explain that in a second. 
Um, but the first thing that we have to prepare is this here to make a bookmark out of that. And there are different possibilities to do that. And I would like to show you some things that you can do with this print bill. So the first thing that you could think about is to make some tiny pockets to put some things in. In my case, really, really flat things. <laughs> perhaps some postage stamps or something like that <laughs> but perhaps your journal is not so bulky and um, you can turn these things here into some really really cool pockets with just making some tiny slots and then you are done so i will show you in this video several possibilities how you can do that but of course you can find your own ways to do that so the first thing that you could do is you could take what is that Oh my goodness, hopefully <laughs> this knife is sharp. Yeah, that should work. Okay, so the first thing that you could do is you could take a ruler. So you could make a slot here. Like this. Through this moth. That means this slot is now... <clears throat> oh, excuse me, please. Exactly from here to here that makes it into a little let's say hidden pocket because later on if only this slot is here you can't really see it until you put something in there yeah you can put a tiny thing in here but when it's like this the moth is complete and you can't really see it another possibility would be to take your knife and the ruler and make a little slot along here just like this so that you later on can take something and put it in like this you can of course also <clears throat> do a similar thing here um, this is going to become the back side of the bookmark later and you can also turn this area here into a little belly band or two pockets depending on how you like it so just make a slot here and here. So these both are now also from this corner here to this corner and here the same from this corner to this corner. You can just um, look at the, this beige frame that you can see all around this thing here and then you can um, yeah, orientate on, on this frame or of course you could also cut out this whole thing and um, put something behind. You could put an acetate here um, and put some tiny things in like brr, glitter or where's the word, sequences or something like that to make a shaker thingy out of that. But I like to turn this into a little belly band. So now you can put something in here. And when we have that, we can of course decide if we want to put something here to the front side as well. Um, and for that, you have these little moths here and you can play around with those. One possibility would be, and I really like that <laughs> one possibility would be to put one here and as you perhaps can see and that is not an, a coincidence or something like that i i made that that it looks like this when you lo look at this moth you can see it has its full body on this one here there is no body and that has a reason we need these later for making this top thingy here and for that they have to look like this Otherwise, it would be not possible. But when you now take this that is originally meant to put it on the top and you put it that you put that here, then you get a really cool look of this moth because it looks now a little bit differently now, uh, of course, than before. The body is not so massive anymore. And you could put this here. You can s still see the head and the S. <laughs> you know, but the middle is not so massive. And a, uh, I made that because I know that many of you like to have moths in their projects, but they don't like those massive bodies that look a little bit, you know, 
ugly and, and not so nice. So I thought you could cover that up and make a butterflyish moth of, out of that, a moth that is not so ugly. So you could place this thing here. And of course, you can also <clears throat> put the others on top here. They have a di little bit different size than, of course, than before, than on the print underneath. But um, with this three-dimensional look, it, it can be really interesting. And for today's project, I think I want to go with this idea here. <clears throat> and put this little guy here on top. And... I also want to have a butterfly underneath, but perhaps not this one because this is too big. Um, I'm, I have thought about taking a half butterfly. For example, like this. Hmm. Now when I see it, I don't like it anymore. But that doesn't matter. We have possibilities. I have taken that out before starting the video and then now I think hmm, perhaps it's not so nice. Let's try only a piece of this. Perhaps only, yeah, only a tiny little bit like this. That is good, but I want to cut off this antenna here like this. Yeah, I like that better. And now I will also um, distress the back here a little bit because I will glue this down, not completely. And uh, I don't want to have this white on the back side. Now it's brown from the back and then we can put that here. Um, so I will first glue down this little wing only here in the middle so that it is a little bit dimensional as well just like this and then I will take the moth put my glue here to the middle and only a tiny little bit to the wings just like this so that the wings can stand up a little bit and then I'm gluing that down here, just like this, trying to uh, line that up with the middle of the mm, moth underneath. And I'm just thinking, why, why haven't I put a little bit of thread underneath? Can someone explain that to me? That is totally weird, and that's not Louisa Heinzel style. But... I have taken book binders glue to glue that so I can just quickly lift this up again carefully. Who? Seriously? Yes, I can. Put a little bit of thread underneath. And put this back. Oh, that's perhaps a little bit much thread. Let's just put that here to the bottom so that it's not so massive on the moth itself. So then it looks like this. And I'm realizing another thing that I have totally forgotten about. What the heck is going on with me today? I'm so sorry. Whew, I have to say... I was not so, uh, I want to put some feelers here, I was uh, not so well the last few days and I had to take some medicine and I think my brain is not, not the best today. But I thought I want to go on with Defemoremba and I want to make some videos and I had to craft again because I was laying in my bed for a few days. Uh, not able to do anything and <laughs> obviously <laughs> I'm not totally fit again but uh, this is what I actually wanted to do and now uh, we can let this dry and then we can take this whole thing 
turn it around and now we are going to fold it exactly in half so if you print that out you can see that here exactly in the middle there's a tiny white line can you see that here and that is exactly the line where you want to fold this if you have made the slots be a little bit careful so that you get the fold exactly in the right place here and as a little help you can also line up the both moths that, that you have here on top so that they are exactly on top of each other because that is necessary to make this whole thing work in the end and then you can just fold the whole thing together and then it looks like this from the one side and like this from the other side and now um, depending on the bulk that you already have in your journal <laughs> You can decide if you want to put something in between of those layers here and that also um, this decision of course also depends on how many slots you have made for pockets i will show you what i have done in the german video there i have made no pockets so here is nothing no slot no pocket no possibility to put something in also here, I've left it as it was. Here is no pocket. The same for the back side. It's paper. Yeah, I have made no slots. But I have put some fabric and lace in between of the both layers before I've sewn them together. So that means you could do that here as well. But if you have the slots, you have to take something for here that is really slim so that you don't come over these little openings here otherwise you would glue your pocket together and that's not what you want so um, I would like to put a little bit of something only here because here when you look to the inside we have a lot of space we could put something in here and here on the um, opposite side there's also nothing so we can do that without any problems and for that, I want to use <clears throat> a piece of this thing here that is just some um, fabric with coffee and I guess some distress thingies like sprays and that stuff. And then I have, ah, come on, this stuff here. Uh, that is something that Barbara has sent with the journal. So I will put that in here, but that's too much. I can save a a lot of this material that doesn't have to be um, too much of that it can only be a little scrap or something what you have left over and I really like to use those materials for such things because yeah then you can use them up and it looks cool at the same time um, and what I also want to do is I want to take some of my white thread it's the same that I've used here on the moth or below the moth and I want to crumble that up a little bit and then I will put that in here just to bring a connection uh, here to to this area and when I have that in there I will go to my sewing machine and I will just sew around the whole thing so here I'm back then this thing looks like this and I really like um, this black contrast that comes with using the black thread. I, I really like black and white together here and I think <clears throat> it fits it fits also really well because of this black clip here. And now <laughs> let's think first about the rust because on our prompt list there's also rust for today. I want to give you some different ideas on how you can do that and then I will show you how I will do it today. So the first thing that you could do is, and that's what I've done in the German video, you could use some grid paste or other texture paste. Just put that here to the corners or, or the, the edges of the bookmark. And here I have... Um, used some grid paste translucent 
and then I have colored that with some distress crayons and smeared that around with my finger and then I've used some gilding wax this one here Ooh, that's really close sorry and that makes some kind of a patina it's not this orangey rust but I think this is rust as well and the contrast with the turquoise and this orange of the moths I think it's really really great uh, so that is one possibility but to give you some more ideas I want to do it a little bit differently for this video so I have taken out this thing here and in here there are some rusted pieces that I got in a happy mail the other day and I wish <laughs> I could use this key it would be just perfect to attach that here just by hand sew it on to the bookmark but this would be way too bulky for my journal I really have a problem I could make a copy of this cut it out and then put it to the bookmark but that would be a little bit you know like cheating um, that's not what I want to do but this would be my my preference if I uh, wouldn't have so much bulk in my journal already. Then we have these little belts here. Also really cute, but really bulky. But three of them here would be just super cute. Just like this. Or a little bit more straight, perhaps, like this. But I also have these leaves. They are flat. <laughs> lucky girl and I have these cool stars this kind of snowflake thingy is not so rusty so I think I can't use that I also have this heart that's perhaps a little bit big let's check this star <clears throat> that's really cute this is not so big and because of that it's I guess more harmonious so I will just take some glue Ooh, my goodness and glue this here and what I also really like for rust is crackle paste of course not in its white Color, but we can change that up a little bit after applying that and letting that dry so when this is dry it looks like this and it has really really fine crackles that makes me really happy the thinner you put the crackle paste onto your project, the tinier the crackles will get and the thicker you put it on, the more bigger crackles you will get. But uh, I'm really happy with this and now I want to go in with these crayons, distress crayons, rusty hinge and cracked pistachio. I think that is a really nice combination because now I would like to color the paste with some rusty colors and for that I'm first smearing this on top of this crackle paste just scribble over this a little bit when we have that we can just go over that with our finger and I'm always realizing that here in my area, I always need a tiny little bit of water. <clears throat> I mean, it's already relatively cold here outside and in my caravan, it's not, I mean, it's not like, like summer or something like that. And I'm realizing that I need a tiny little bit of water to smear that around. I think it's because it's so cold. But uh, no problem, it's meant to use it with water, of course. Okay, so here we go. Oh, <laughs> snack time. So, ah, this is, it's good that it is so big today. <laughs> so, this is what it looks like. 
on the back you can see those cookies really really well <laughs> it looks a little bit gray doesn't it i mean i'm a little bit afraid but that smells like chocolate or something Mmm. Mmm. Oh. <laughs> it's a little bit like those Oreo cookies. Really crispy. And that white stuff, it's a little bit like white chocolate. But more creamy. <laughs> I think normally it's meant to break that into those pieces. I mean, <laughs> I would never eat a chocolate in this way. Just take those bites from the whole bar <laughs> without defemoramba. I mean, only I think that that is the only time in the year that it is allowed to eat something like this that looks like chocolate <laughs> like this without breaking it into those pieces <laughs> no junk journal police no snack police here and no friends or other people in front of the window so i don't have to share why not eating it like this it's really really good i would say nine out of ten yeah so when this is dry it looks like this i'm happy with the colors and how this came out on the crackle paste but <laughs> it could be a little bit more brownish uh, when we look at this whole arrangement then we have a lot of this reddish brown here and also this rusty star is of course not totally orange i mean rust is always a little bit brown isn't it so i thought i'm taking out some coffee this is just some regular coffee powder i mean this stuff that you mix with water and then you have something that tastes and smells similar to coffee <laughs> and i would like to add some of this uh, icing spray here this is the color honey and i i've already opened it <laughs> i think this ooh, <coughs> wait wait ah nothing is coming out i think this is a little bit uh i think i haven't cleaned this spray thingy but we can also do it like this um this color is really gorgeous but it's really orange as well and i thought perhaps we can mix that with the coffee to make it a little bit more brownish and i want to put some of that here to the edges and this gives the whole thing also some kind of a frame so when this is dry it looks like this and I think that's much better and it matches the moth color way better than it was before but those crayon colors still come out really well Okay, so now uh, when we have that, we can finish up this upper part here. This little moth here shall later on be shown um, from the outside of the journal. So this will peek out. Yay. <laughs> you know, we need things that are outside of the journal because, uh, yeah, then it's not so thick. <laughs> so I will, I will just take off the some of this stuff just because i have it here um to cover this white area here and when this is dry 
looks like this and now we can play around with this upper part here of this bookmark so um here you can get really creative and you can also use up some of your fabric scraps or paper scraps or whatever you have because now we can fill this area a little bit so I want to take some of the same material that I've already used here. This is also some of the stuff that Barbara has sent to me. So I will put some glue just here to those wings to be able to glue this little piece on top. Just like this. Uh, and here, um, please make sure that in this area here that it gets not too bulky there so that is exactly if you if you follow this line here of the this edge then you get in the exactly the middle of the moth and you want to make sure that this is really really glued down well and that you use something that is not too bulky here Otherwise, your arrangement here on the top would look really strange. And then I also want to put some of my white thread to this area. And then I want to use this half die cut butterfly. <laughs> I've used a half one here as well. And I want to put another one here on top. Uh, I just try to decide if I want to have the same like I've used there <clears throat> hmm. yeah and this paper is also more, more sturdy where I had cut out the die cut from so I'm just cutting the antenna off and trying to get here approximately the same piece like from the other side and then I will put this here just like this make sure that it is really really flat here in the middle again same reason like before because now we are going to take one of these that you can also find on the freebie I will quickly put some of this stuff here to the back side as well because I will glue it not completely and now when you have that oh and of course you could also take a second of these without doing this step that I've just done and you could just glue that on top of each other so that you have both sides like this if you perhaps don't like such a brownish back side of this you could also put two on top of each other or what you also could do, of course, is make both brown. I mean, why not doing that? Let's do that. Then I can show it better. So I will paint a second one brown. So when this is dry, then you could take this one. Put some glue just here to the middle. Like this. Take this one and put... Uh, the brown side like this glue them together in the middle and now the glue of course is only in the middle and the wings will go apart from each other later make sure that it sticks really well because now you want to fold this so we want to fold it like this just in the middle like this then you can open it up again so that you have a really nice fold there in the middle then it's easier to glue down to this piece and now we are going to take this then you can lift up this a little bit so how can I show that normally it's like this and now you take your fingers and you just press a tiny little bit so that it goes into this angle then it's easier to glue then you take some more glue and put that also only here to the middle we don't want to glue this down completely and now you take this and just press that there to the middle oh the antennas Louise we need antennas <laughs> I'm so sorry ah! 
don't forget the antennas we are going to take antennas <laughs> of course that's optional but i really like to have them there so of course if you want to have antennas then just place them here before you put this last layer on top just put them in there then take this little guy and just bring him in there and i'm trying to that is so small it's really hard to show that so i'm trying to line up this thing here with this thing there so that this whole thing looks like it's one moth that has several layers i'm pressing that in there and with my fingers i'm pressing now against my scissors so that this can stick in there really well and now you have these different layers here and now when you put that in your journal you can just line that up with the very top edge here of your book or your journal and of course you could use that for a normal book as well and then you can close the journal and then you will have this little moth here on the top of the journal and it makes no bulk <laughs> to your page it looks really cute and yeah it's just sitting there <laughs> i thought this is a really really cute idea and of course you could change this idea in several different ways i mean you could say I don't need a bookmark for my journal because I know my journal really well and I don't have to mark a page. Yeah, so you could also just take that and find the right position and then glue it down. <clears throat> for example, like you would glue down a belly band. Just make some glue here and here. Glue that down and you would have a belly band where you can put something behind. Or you could glue it here and here and here to make a little pocket, side-loaded pocket. But uh, then please don't put too much effort into the back side. You don't need to make these little slots then if you want to turn it into a pocket or a belly band or tuck spot or whatever because then you wouldn't need this here on the back yeah so that would be would make no sense to put that um, to the back if you want to glue it down but I just want to give you some options <clears throat> and when you have that here of course now we can decide um, to make a little background perhaps mm, because uh, in my case, I will leave this bookmark exactly here in my journal. I will not put it into other places because this is my ephemera idea junk journal and every ephemera has a page so that I also have the possibility later to make some notes about what I have done here. And if I would take the bookmark and put it into another place, then my notes would be in the wrong position in the book. Do you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, for me, it makes sense to create a background now. Uh, but if you don't want that, yeah, you can also skip that, of course. And we want to find something that we can put into these little pockets, of course, so that you can see how that would look if they are filled up. Really simple, but it is a background. <laughs> Let's check. Yeah, that matches really, really well. Haha. -ha. Okay, so uh, then <laughs> for the little things that we want to put into these little pockets, I've decided that I just want to cut this card down. Ink that up a little bit. Then you can just Put that in there and I will do the same thing here for this bottom pocket and this thing I want to turn into a little tag so I'm just cutting the corners off and I'm putting a little hole here ink that up then it looks like this And we can put that in here. And then we still have this belly band on the back. But now my card is a little bit, you know, 
oh, but what about this thing? That looks interesting. And that this actually says the animal that we've used today. So why not taking this and turn that into a little label like this? You could also put a thread here, but you know, it makes the things bulky. I don't, I, I will not do it. Oh, and now I can't get this up. It's a little bit tricky, but um, when you've used it several times, then it's really easy to get this in and out. So why not having this here like this? Why not? You could also make this a little bit more interesting. Uh, yes, we will just glue this little guy here. <laughs> bulk, Luisa, bulk! Ah. I know, I know. <laughs> just like this. And this way, if you have something that is perhaps really thin and a little bit slippery, then when you glue this thing there, and the glue is dry, of course, and it goes like this, it can't fall out. So belly bands in this direction sometimes are a little bit some kind of a diva. <laughs> Yesterday. I realized that Barbara says in those cases, this belly band is a diva. I would normally say the belly band is a bitch, <laughs> but that's the difference between 49 Dragonflies and Luisa Heinzel. <laughs> I'm only kidding, but you know, this could be a problem because um, especially tiny things could fall out here. But if you glue the moth here, then this little wing will stop the thing from falling out little trick okay when we have that we can just ask ourselves where are the antennas Louisa sorry but eh? uh, we still have this little guy shall we perhaps put him here to cover this ugly stuff up or here perhaps oh that would look great yeah, I really like that. I really like those connections between two pages just by adding a tiny little thing to the other page. No time, no extra supplies, uh, just using what we had on the desk. I love such th things. And we have a connection to the other page. Oh, I like white splatters. <laughs> And white splatters always bring such animals like butterflies and moths, of course, as well, to life. Okay, so when this is dry, this little guy looks like this. Oh, I really love this difference that those white splatters make. And then here on our bookmark, it, it, ooh, it looks like this can't speak anymore <laughs> here on the top and I think this on the top with the white splatters also makes a really big difference these turned out not totally white and I really like that because then this die cut pops out really much and now when you close your journal you can just have it like this I hope you liked this idea. <laughs> Please feel free to download the freebie from my website. The link is down below in the description box. And I'm really excited to see your creations on social media. What you have posted in the last days is just amazing. You are so thrilled about Defemoremba. That is just amazing. Your creations are so great. And I'm really looking forward to what you will make out of this little idea here. I hope you liked it and please don't forget to check out Barbara's video. The link to her channel is down below in the description box. She will show you another idea on today's prompt and make sure to check out her video. I am sure it's something totally different. Um, and yeah, <laughs> create something beautiful for your own journal. And I am hoping that we will see tomorrow with another prompt from our list. And I wish you a very creative time. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.